record. So we are now recording. Hello, everyone. So the first order of business here is to review the minutes from last time and also pick a new minute taker. And I do not remember who did it last time. Sarah, I believe. Yeah. Um, so Darcy, I think that puts, puts you next, unless you want to try to switch with someone since I know you missed last time. I guess it doesn't matter for next this. Oh, I think you're muted. I, Darcy just did it the time before last, I think. I don't think I'm next. Yeah, no, Darcy did it oh, and then sorry. Sarah did it. Okay, so then the next would be, Jesse, is that you? Or Steve. Or Steve. I'm not even attempting to do an app. I'm like, I'm not even think, attempting to pick up the R <laughs> as it first. I'm I've only got one hand. My other hand's in a slump. Oh. I'm not going to be very fast at typing or writing. Oh. Okay, Jesse, then I think you're Sorry. the <laughs> Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> what you do? Yeah, you okay, Steve? Yeah, I just had um, rotator cuff repair surgery two weeks ago. Mm. So I'm two weeks into six weeks with right. the arm in a sling all the time. Oh. Yeah. Well, hopefully that a positive move. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I hope after six months I'll be back and better than where I was. Yeah, yeah. It's a long, long recovery. Yeah. Oh. Okay, do folks want me to show the minutes or are people scrolling on their own? Thumbs up if anybody wants me to show the minutes. Nope, okay. Okay, does anybody want a, a motion to accept or does anyone have any comments? I would move to accept the minutes as written. Second. Second, great. Stephanie, do you want to do the vote? Sure. So I'm not doing it in alphabetical order. Um, Drucker? Yes. Selman? Dumont? I think, Jesse, I think you actually have to, sorry, you have to unmute yourself. Yes. Okay, thanks. Dumont? Roof? Yes. Uh, Breger? Yes. Durr? Yes. Okay. They have passed. Um, Laura, so um, we do have one public uh, participant this evening, uh, Sarah Ross. Hi, Sarah. But um, Sarah has stated that she does not want to speak. She's just going to listen this evening. Um, and I was wondering if we could move Brianna up in the agenda even before my report so that she doesn't have to um, sort of wait for too long 
and we can move to the communications um, agenda item. Sure, that sounds good to me. So Brianna, if you're with us, we're gonna move you up front. <laughs> I am here. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Uh, so my name is Brianna Sunred. Many of you I've met, uh, but I'll just introduce myself for anybody who's um, attending who I have not met. Um, I work for the, the town in the capacity of communications manager, as well as community participation officer, um, out of the town manager's office, as well as the information technology office. And thank you for inviting me here today. So I guess I can just jump in real quick, Brianna, because I can give an overview of why we invited you. Um, we had had a discussion about having a website presence a while back. And so I had said that I would reach out and have a conversation with Brianna. Um, and we talked about what some other committees have done, some of the things you were looking for. We mentioned dashboards. Um, so I thought it would be helpful um, to just sort of let Brianna know about the things that you're interested in doing and she can sort of give you some feedback on what's feasible, what isn't. And I don't know, um, Bri, if you had um, an example to show them teed up or anything. Sure, I can certainly, um, I can certainly do that. I mean, uh, with our committees, uh, pages right now, the boards and committee pages run the gamut from just having a charge and agendas and minutes and the a table of who the um, current members are um, versus, for example, one example I like to use is Public Art Commission, where they have a more expanded web presence. Um, they have, you know, a gallery. Um, they have multiple pages. So that's an example of um, a board or committee that has many more pages than kind of just that standard, um, you know, charge, com uh, committee membership, and staff liaison description. Um, so those, those are, I can, I can pull that up if you think it's valuable, Stephanie, to, sh to share. Um, um, maybe we can take a look at one example, and then maybe we could also pull up their page as well. Um, and maybe that will help facilitate some of the discussion. Sure. So why don't you just give me one second to have those keyed up and sure. I can share my screen. I just heard a rumble of thunder my way, so I'm hoping I don't lose you all. Oh no. <laughs> it's clear skies up here in North Amherst for now at least. No. Oh. Okay, just a second while I get this pulled up for you. Okay, so I'm gonna have Energy Climate Action Committee's page pulled up as well as the, the public art. Um, I'll, I'll start with public art just to give you an example of a committee or a commission that has um, a, a deeper, more, uh, I guess I would say visual or interactive presence. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. Okay, so right now, hopefully everybody can see the um, Public Art Commission webpage. Uh, we've done a number of things with the Public Art Commission and, and some of their projects over the years. Um, so we've used uh, various different methods of outreach or, um, you know, soliciting applications for some of their projects using um, modules on our website, for example, web forms for people to submit um, or request to exhibit their art or to sign up for some of the, um, you know, activation projects on the electric boxes throughout town. Um, they also <clears throat> have the, the information that I described previously that's kind of your your standard uh, format in terms of mission or charge, as well as memberships, um, membership information. But they do have um, more of a reach where they have forms that I mentioned where community members can submit to um, have their art as part of the um, town hall exhibits. And I'll go back just, we have a featured artist page that highlights those um, 
art exhibitors who have come into town hall. And, you know, lately the last few turns have been um, obviously a remote experience. So we had a video um, put on the site for the, the most recent exhibit since it wasn't actually in town hall. Um, and then they just go on to have a couple um, couple more pages. We've got a, an Amherst art tour that was created that we have embedded on their pages. So I guess this would be kind of the opposite end of the, um, the spectrum in terms of a boards and committee page. So there's a number of things we can do, um, especially if there's outside resources that the committee um, is interested in having, if there's videos, if there's um, anything that you know lives on another site, a dashboard, a, a YouTube video, we can, you know, a walking tour such as this art tour, we can have that live under um, a committee's page or a suite of pages that we can create. I'll pause there. Um, I'll pop over to the Energy, Climate, Energy and Climate Action Committee's page. Um, again, just to reference, this is, we've got the, the charge, the membership, um, agendas, minutes, packets, and recordings, and just a little bit more about the, um, the charge here all spelled out. So I'm happy to, you know, answer any, any questions or if we want to dig into a certain element of any of these, um, feel free. I have a, a question. Um, if, if we were to put we decided to say we wanted to put latest news or latest developments. Is, is Who is able to access and write new text or content on this website? So traditionally, uh, for the most part, for boards and committees, it goes through their, their staff liaison. Okay. Um, there are um, other, you know, let's say you wanted a news category. We do have the capability to set up a news category that's specific to your committee and your work that community members can subscribe to. Um, and that's, a, that's a, a different module, but just to give it a little context of what that looks like, I'll show you on my screen here. We have a notif notify me page. Um, so just as, a, as an example to reference what you just said, you could have an ECAC or however you want it to be called uh, notifications category hmm. where any community member could come here see that on the list of options, or it can be marketed as a very specific uh, sign up. So for example, in your, you know, meeting packet or email communication, you can have click here to sign up for ECAC news. Um, and that's a separate module. Um, but it can also be linked on your page. So that's certainly mm -hmm. something that we can do. I would suggest that the content, whether it's created by the committee would funnel through um, the staff liaison for dissemination. Hello. Hi. It looks like we've lost Stephanie. Yeah. Okay, Darcy, go ahead. Um, I just am wondering if there's a way that we can have a presence on the home page um, because I did not know that that um, that page existed, <laughs> and I don't know whether there's a way to. And I know you probably advertise it on social media, um, but uh, I think that if there's a way for us to have a have a really visible dashboard that is visible at least partially on the home page, then um, you know we'd get a lot more visibility. Also, there's a there is a page that I I've just been looking for it. I can't find it. That Concord is using. That is um, it's a community. It's an interactive community dashboard that is that's setting goals for residents and businesses. And there's a, you know, there's a, um, there's a goal set in each area. And then you can kind of watch participation increasing in whatever the action area is, which seems like a pretty cool thing to do. Mm. Yeah, so, so definitely um, we're in the process of, hopefully in the next few weeks we'll be, um, 
doing a, a design, an aesthetic design refresh of um, all of our pages. So this will look a little different. Coming forward, we'll have the opportunity to better highlight, you know, trending topics, have tiles for um, topical information or timely seasonal information. So things will look slightly different um, as far as what you can access through the home page. We are also in the process right now in align, aligning the town council's goals into um, a strategic plan that would have a dashboard. So for example, climate action would be one of those dashboard items. Um, it'd be more of a standalone um, site experience, so to, so to say, and a lot of the communities who are using dashboards, you'll see that it might be either linked on their homepage, but you are brought to a, a different um, website. So one of the things we hope and plan to do is to outline the uh, major goals that have been set and um, put out those objectives and also track the measures and performance and climate action would be included in that process. Um, you might be speaking, speaking to a more specific dashboard to, to the work that you're all doing as a committee, um, but this is something we will be doing town-wide in the months to come. I hope that answers your question, but feel free to. Um... Yeah, yeah, no, I just think that it would be good. And we might wanna come up with some kind of a, um, a logo or title to our climate action as they've done in, in Concord, which I cannot remember right now, but it has something to do with revolution, <laughs> um, which just highlights the climate action. Um, Darcy, if I can just jump in, and I'm sorry, I apologize, we lost power and I got dumped out of the meeting and um, our, I'm having to use my phone now, so. Um, so Concord uh, and a few other communities that have dashboards, and I think I've talked to you all about this before, um, are using the KLA Associates uh, template. And um, that is a fairly pricey dashboard to use. Um, I think there's an annual fee. I know when I looked at it at one point, it was around $10,000. And then there's an annual fee, and that's just to establish it. And then there's an annual fee on top of that. So. Um, the communities that I know that have used it have uh, done it through some of their grant funding. So it's not to say we can't do something like that, um, but I think it's it's not something I think the town can just easily produce. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I know I saw what you were showing Brianna and if it means we're putting something up on the stage, that would be, that would be great. And that might be a temporary measure until we could do something more fancy like KLA's version. Yeah, the name of it. The name of it is Mass Energize. Um, and Stephanie and I have taken a, a look at some of the um, the dashboards that she she did mention. I think it was through KLA, um, which are really really well done. Um, obviously, not done in house by most of the communities. So. Um, you know, hopefully in the future, we have increased capacity in, in, internally to do things like that and um, at least accommodate uh, a portion of that through the, through the dashboard that we'll be setting up for the, um, the five or six goals. I can't remember at the top of my head at the moment, but with climate action being one of those. So having um, a space on that dashboard will definitely be a step in, in the right direction, if not really being the, the standalone one that you're looking for at this time. And Bree, is there any um, kind of, I mean, I think you mentioned that the website's getting updated, but um, it, you know, I think there's probably a larger challenge of just communicating on the website generally and communicating generally across the town. And just wondering if there are grants or other things out there that support that work that um, would benefit all communication, not just ECAC, but that ECAC could also benefit from. Uh, so as far as grants, you know, especially in the last few months where where staff capacity has been 
completely, um, you know, burdened through our response to COVID. Uh, we've been finding ways in which to support our operations through that lens. Um, none of them have been long-term, you know, CARES funding, things that will expire um, through the end of, you know, at the end of December. Um, and, and there's been discussions about taking a good look at our, um, you know, our current needs and do we have enough team members working on these things. But as far as grants, I don't know of anything specific. I do have um, a graduate student and I've had several graduate students work with me through work study or via internship in the past. So I, I have a, a communications intern right now, but her work has to be connected to primarily to COVID um, in order for her to be um, on board with us. So there's been some, some small stopgap measures that we've tried, uh, but we really need to come up or, or, or in, invest in a longer term solution to kind of expand um, the amount of folks we have available to, to work on this. And that's, that extends into the technology piece as well, not, not just communications, because in many cases they're um, enmeshed. And if we did a site where we had, you know, it went to a dashboard or, or to a site that's not the official Amherst website, would that site still kind of need to go through the same internal updating processes or were there more flexibility there in terms of updating the material? There would definitely be, um, so if you wanted to have kind of a standalone site that was maybe using um, KLA or a different service that had a, a new URL that didn't live in our page structure, there are ways for us to connect those two things where we, we have a link that says, you know, sustainability dashboard or climate action dashboard, and we could um, make it appear that it's part of our instance of, of our website. Um, so just to give a little bit about, um, you know, the, the website, we, we do not have um, a webmaster. Our, our content management platform is predicated, on, predicated upon departments and people within their departments updating their own content. And so depending on which department or which, you know, area you're in, there's wide different, you know, a very big difference in terms of if there's one staff member who can work on it or if there's 10. Sorry, the thunder is starting at my house too. Um, so there's not one internal uh, content updating system. It really varies depending on you know, the capacity of departments, whether they've got three people assigned to the task or whether they have none. Uh, so right now we're, we're actually working with departments to go through and audit their pages, have them identify who the you know, staff content liaison is to make that process easier. Uh, but if you had to, to answer your question directly, if you had a site that we um, linked out to, you know, the responsibility of the upkeep of that site, would we would have to discuss that. It, would it be, you know, a, a third party service? Would it be the staff liaison? Would it be a, another department member? Um, but you wouldn't, it would be kind of a, a seamless um, jump from your standard page and we could link out to your, your standalone dashboard. Without, not without having to go through like an approval process, somebody would be maintaining that page separately, I would, I would imagine. Great. Any other questions? Um, I, can, I was just gonna jump in about the grant opportunity. Um, potentially we could, um, depending on what we apply for the next time through um, MVP, we could potentially request funding for a dashboard and that could be especially if we put it into the climate action plan then it could be something that we could potentially get some funding for just to put it out there yeah good to know looks like the the world's ending outside just yeah just <laughs> yeah it was very <laughs> dramatic here i have to say <laughs> Puppies so we moved each other it's the, been the nice it's been good working with you all <laughs> <laughs> the power's flickering. Yeah. <laughs> what about this meeting? It, like it always happens on this meeting. I know. Like literally leaves are like just like going crazy out there. Yep. Um, it was um, very quick, I have to say. Okay. I would find it useful, Stephanie, if you know of other 
communities that have great websites with the dashboard. Um, if you could send a few examples or if other people on the committee know of some of those, I think it'd be nice to see what else others have done and decide what we might want to steal or borrow in terms of ideas. I know a few and I can, and again, I'm the ones that I know, um, you know, Kim was associated with our network. So a lot of us know her. So uh, several mm -hmm. communities have used her, um, her platform, but I can, I can definitely find a few examples and send them. See us all glancing out the window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was very fast, but unfortunately we lost power that has not come on and we don't typically lose power. So um, it was very dramatic, fast, but dramatic. Well, it looks like Dwayne's getting an <laughs> inside of a tornado just now. <laughs> well, I have to check. <laughs> Stephanie, can you send the mass energize example? Uh, or I could if, if you don't have it. Um, yeah, from Concord. Yeah, Concord and I think maybe Wayland. Just say that Dwayne and I are very familiar with the Mass Energize program. We're, we've worked with it. Um, and um, it's its own website and it's a very, you know, particular campaign. Um, so mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not adaptable to whatever we want, although it has a lot of um, pieces of what we want. And, and could be adapted if we had, you know, money to, to help them do that. But they, they are also still just getting going. Yep. Is it um, associated with specific campaigns well, they have that the communities been. are doing? I think in the some dashboard case. is being piloted in Concord and one other town that I think is Wayland. Wayland, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we, I can put together all the links on, you know, in one message so um, I can get them. Oh, so I think, did we lose Brianna? It looks like she just said a big tree just came down. Oh, no. So I think we might have lost her. Yikes. Is there so, <laughs> like a warning or something? <laughs> oh. There are tough. severe thunderstorm warnings, which is yeah. the level of thunderstorm warning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I because I'm um, on my phone now, I can't see you all, so I'm not even 100% sure who's there and who isn't. <laughs> We're all still here except for Brianna. Except Brianna, okay. All right. Laura? You're going to have to speak up. Oh, uh, no, nope. we lost Laura. We lost Laura, too. I can't see you. So, okay. Uh, I'm going to just, I'll throw in two uh, regarding the website and any funding. This is Jesse. Um, I, that should, in my opinion, should dovetail with uh, branding support as well. I, I still think our, we are, and I think the climate action plan will hopefully be a big part of this, but we have a lot of great ideas, but there are, they, the, the messaging hasn't still needs to gel and and hit you know multiple levels of complexity etc so i think a, a branding any kind of branding support seems like it would fall in nicely with with developing a web presence i mean depending um, on the time of year if i'm stuck at home with my kiddo i can't help with that but if things resume slightly better um that's something that i can take on in in part or at least shepherd okay just making notes <laughs> um so yeah so laura um unfortunately did lose power as well and so we don't have her with us either she is she's back oh, i'm back sorry oh she's okay great okay oh, no worries Twain looks like he's filming a well, I got some, like, scary movie. Trees around my house. <laughs> and, uh, I literally moved into the basement in case something comes down. <laughs> Smart move. Yeah, I mean, things are definitely hitting my roof. But 
<laughs> I'm in the basement. <laughs> okay. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah, this I was going to say, this is quite the um, interesting meeting. <laughs> What's the weather like where you are, Lauren? <laughs> um, Maybe everybody can point their right cameras now. out the window and we can compare what's happening. <laughs> we had a storm earlier, but it's passed now, so. Okay. Looks like um, we're starting to get it here in South Amherst. Yeah, I don't have power. Um, so we just lost Jesse too. Oh. Okay. Well, this we're going to lose people as we go. I so think so. Bruri and I are both in North Amherst. <laughs> it's coming through the center right now. <laughs> it's hailing out there. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Okay. So should we do we, we should probably probably do it back? We right? can. <laughs> yeah, let's just do what we can. Um, okay, Stephanie, we do you want to give your um sure. Oops. Um so my my really quick update, um, and it kind of goes along with Brianna's um uh, talking about dashboards and, and web presence, um, I, I attended a meeting of the NEMS network uh, folks and we had Carol Collins from Greenfield, who's the sustainability or really the energy manager um, is her title. And she um, showed us a dashboard that she developed. It's really just an Excel spreadsheet, but it's all, it's basically um, all of the a dashboard that shows all of the town's buildings and the energy use, the square footage, I think um, greenhouse gas emissions and um, measures and things uh, that have been implemented that you know are like major projects that are coming up for buildings. So it's really just kind of a great spreadsheet really of just um, all of the information of all the buildings. And so um, everybody has requested kind of the, not her, information but sort of the format that she developed kind of the the quick punch list that she developed um, I don't have it yet but I did request it I will say that it took her two years to get all that information together and that is with another staff person to assist her so um, and it's a lot of information that you have to get from other departments and you know it's kind of the similar to the when I'm doing the vehicle inventory it's not easy to get all of the information from folks um, then we don't even know when we do that it's completely 100% accurate. So I will, um, I will be getting that information from her. And I do think that's something though that I can talk to the new um, facilities manager and speak to him about, you know, creating something like this and working with him and maybe he and I can work on it together. It's something I have to propose and make sure that the powers that be sanction it. So but it's a great tool and I think it's really exactly the kind of thing um, especially that you were looking for Darcy with capital requests I think it's a really great um, efficient way to keep track of things for at least in terms of buildings municipal buildings so um, <coughs> sorry what was that Darcy could you share it with us um, yeah when I get it it's not it's really just a, a list it's not you can actually go to Greenfield's website. <coughs> Excuse me. You can go to Greenfield's website and you can, I think you can look it up. They're building, just look for building dashboard um, and you can see what they have. And I think that has all the detail. What she's going to send me is not obviously a completed, created spreadsheet. It's more just the list of things that she used um, to create it. So but take a look at, I can send the link to Greenfields. I can send that to everyone, maybe along with the other dashboard examples. I'll send that link as well. But um, if you're eager to see it right away, you can just go to Greenfield. Um, and then I just wanted to give an update on um, the BRIC grant process. We are, um, I think moving forward with two requests um, we can request one implementation grant and one planning grant. And the one that I propose for the solar siting is going to fall under the category of a planning grant. No guarantee that we'll get invited to submit. I'm still trying to figure out if um, 
we can do it regionally. I did reach out to Wayne Fiden of Northampton. He's interested, but I still need to speak to Chris Mason about it um, to see if it's something they want to go in on together uh, as something that could be um, sort of lay the work, groundwork for some information for the CCA effort in terms of citing renewables, uh, solar projects within our communities. So that's something um, that would be really exciting if we can, if we can do that. And especially if we partner on it, I think that would be um, something that's innovative and not what brick grants usually fund. Usually it's infrastructure stuff like stormwater. Um, the other two projects that the town is considering, one is for stormwater, one is about dam structure safety. So uh, those are the other two projects um, that are potentially moving forward. One of those two will move forward. I don't know that we're doing both. So, um, so that is happening. Um, I'm trying to think um, about any other. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what was that Darcy? I just wondered if you could share those two grant applications with us so we could take a look at them. They haven't, we haven't even, nothing is, there, they aren't, there aren't any applications yet. All we're doing right now is submitting a statement of interest. And I'm just letting you know that those are a couple of projects that are being considered, but they're not, there's been no decision which of those two will move forward. Um, and I think the town manager is very likely to share them as soon as the town submits a statement of interest. And those are due next week. So I still don't know which one is going to move forward. Um, and it's literally at this point, it's only a statement of interest. There's nothing else. Um, I have talked to Niche Engineering, to Isabel Kawich, about um, the solar siting and ways in which they might be able to assist us with something um, for the application. And Isabel uh, said that they can definitely do some kind of a you know, a look at um, identifying solar potential within the town. So they could put something together for us. It won't be anything in depth, but it will be at least something that could be um, a tool, a report or a tool that would be useful to either apply either for BRIC funding um, or in a future MVP round. If we don't get the funding through BRIC grant, we might be able to apply for the same kind of work through the next round of MVP. So there's potential there. So um, that's something that will be moving forward as well. And I think those are the major things that I have right now. Yeah, Andrea. I was signed up to do the notes. Um, and when I have been on, I have been taking notes. <laughs> so um, great. Yeah, Jesse was taking them. So that's perfect that since he is not here yet, <laughs> back from I'm, I'm whatever happened. Because I got my power back. Um, unfortunately, my phone didn't have any charge. So I couldn't do that. Um, so I, I don't know what he missed. I, I missed the beginning of Stephanie's report. And I picked up, he texted me and I picked up a little bit. So I'll just send you what I typed. So maybe between the three of us, we'll have it all chunked uh, okay. together. <laughs> well, and you send them all to me. So I always fill in the gaps. <laughs> so, um, so that, you know, between everybody, we'll, we'll have a full set. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll go from, from now on, it looks like it's Pat's huge branch came down very close to the house. But I'll be taking notes now. Okay. Okay. So, unless there's questions for Stephanie, we can move to ECAC member updates. I just have one quick update, which is that I am working. Uh-oh. Left, left us in suspense. <laughs> oh my God. This is definitely going to go down as one of the most interesting meetings we've had. <laughs> Getting a mess. If anybody cares to watch, it's not going to not gonna be very interesting. I have Laura there. Laura, are you back? We can't hear. Yeah, nothing. I can't hear you, Laura. Mm -hmm. 
No, no, we can't hear you. We're hearing Martian sounds. Yeah, your audio is breaking up. Kendra, oh, you have an update. Why don't you just give yours while we're... I have an update. Um, what's my update? Oh, about the uh, planning oh. letter. Planning. About... Is that an update? The what? Planning and zoning letter. Uh, isn't that on the agenda? No? Oh, maybe it is. It's not on, it just falls under ECAC updates. So oh, okay. um, right, I sent yeah. it to everybody. Okay, yeah. So I wrote a draft. It's a one page. Um, I don't know if you, it would be nice to send it out. Um, did, but maybe we should share it so that people could read through it. Um, it came after the packet, after the redone spreadsheet. <laughs> it was the third in the thread that Stephanie sent. Um, yeah, so, um, so everyone has, a, has it so everyone can read through it. And it's um, from me and it's your link. And if we had some comments or thoughts, I, first, I it really helpful and appreciative that Andre did it, put it together. Um, uh, were we going to spend a little time talking about it, or, or uh, should we just send thoughts in um, separately? I think, given the challenge that we're having, I, I don't know about anybody else. I can't read that at all because it's on my phone. <laughs> I'm thinking um, that it makes more sense to maybe, given the technology, technological problems we're having tonight, to make comments, give comments to me, and I can compile them all and get them to you, Andra. Or you can send them directly to Andra, but you can't exchange. Just send them to her directly. Yep. But Andra, you can't respond. Just make sure I'm copied. I'll send them to you, Stephanie. <laughs> it's yeah, but I, I can work them in. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Copy both. Yeah. Yeah. You could send them. To, yeah. Copy. Send them to me, and then copy Andra. Why don't we do it that way? Okay. In the same email, CC Andra. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Yeah. Just copy her. Yeah. As long as just there can't be an exchange of info. You know, you can't. You can't have a big discussion about it, but. You can just copy it to her. You're just sending her information. That's fine. Okay. You have a deadline for those comments. Say it again. Did we have a deadline oh, for yeah. getting our comments in? Well, yeah, so that we could have it in the packet for next meeting and then vote on it. That would be good. Why don't we say a week from today? Mm -hmm. So by next Wednesday, the 14th. Okay, um, I, I have another um, update uh, and, and it's just an invitation. Um, there's um, a new regenerative uh, food system um, group and um, I'm helping to make this showing of a new Kiss the ground. Um, available. We're doing on weekend, Sunday and Monday. The Holcomb Barn by the Holcomb Barn uh, in South Amherst. And if you're interested, just let me. I'll send you the. We we missed the the main point there. The the fact that what what's happening those days. So I'm. Um Andrew, I don't, you're, you're sort of in and out and um, your audio hasn't been consistent. So I'll just help you here. Uh, there's a video showing, a public showing of um, a, a video called Kiss the Ground. There's gonna be two showings. And um, I, if I, Andra sends me the dates, I can forward it to everybody. I think I have them, but if you wanna send them to me again, 
uh, I can forward it to the committee in case anyone is interested in attending that viewing. And I think there'll probably be discussion afterwards as my guests. Um, but Andra can let us know the details and I'll get it out to everybody. And I don't know who's sharing. Andra, if you're sharing the screen, um, we might want to stop sharing. Thank you. That was me. Can you hear me? Oh, huh? Yes, we can hear you now. Right. You're back. Great. Um, but we lost Andra. <laughs> this, <No>. is a, <laughs> this is a motley crew right now. Um, okay. It's crazy. So like anybody, I think if, oh, sorry. <laughs> anytime somebody starts to talk, a tree falls in their backyard. So <laughs> To talk in very short sentences. Um, I'll be very quick. Last last time we reviewed Darcy the memo that you had had drafted for the finance committee. We were going to make some comments on it uh, or some edits to it just to clarify that we are here to help. Um, and I added a reference to life cycle costing. Um, and we agreed that we should remove mention of GHG emissions in the inventory, just because we don't think the folks doing the inventory would actually be calculating the GHG em emissions and we don't wanna scare them off, but rather we wanna make sure we're collecting the right information so that whoever's doing the GHG inventory can calculate those emissions. Um, so I'm just making those edits and I can, um, I think they're minor enough that I think we can just send it off unless folks want to review it and um, vote on it next time. That sounds good. Okay, I'm not seeing any shaking negative heads. So, all right, so I'll move forward with that. Does anyone else have updates? ECAC members have updates? Nope. Okay. So given the precarious situations here, I don't know if there's like a specific agenda item that we want to make sure we do. I guess there's only one item left, which is the discussion of the cap outline and framework. So I will turn it over to Lauren and or Jim. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Um, hopefully we don't lose folks along the way. Um, I'd just like but, to say I'm not speaking. I'm trying to save my house. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm possibly the only person not in the middle of a thunderstorm right now. So hopefully I won't cut out. Um, so following up on our conversation from last time about the framework for the plan, um, we wanted to use our time today to talk a little bit about the potentials, um, sort of the big visions that are emerging um, and informing where we're headed long term. Um, we've heard from the committee that the plan really needs to focus on actions that can be realistically achieved in the next three to five years, um, but also that it needs to present this holistic vision of how the town will achieve its goals over the long term. Um, and so we've been thinking about this framework as essentially one of priorities on the one hand, the immediate term, and then potentials, the longer term things that our priorities are gonna influence. Um, so in terms of the priorities, there are actions coming out of the task groups, which Stephanie included in your meeting to packet, um, the beginning is up those. Um, and then we have actions that have come from the MVP and ECIC outreach, there will no doubt be actions that come from conversations with town staff and other stakeholders, and of course, more actions that will derive from best practices and precedents in the field. So that's sort of where we're at with actions. Um, and then through the current process, we're also getting a strong sense of sort of what the immediate priorities are for the community and some of those pathways to action. But where we're hoping for the committee's vision is really around this big picture. What are the long-term changes that we need to see? Um, we know where we're going in terms of the 50% emissions reductions by 2030 and, and carbon neutrality by 2050. 
but what happens when we get there? Um, so we thought this would be a good moment to sort of reflect and share among the co-chairs of the different groups around what's been emerging through the task groups and um, sort of use that to create a foundation for developing the components of the plan that will focus on those long-term potentials. Um, so here's the question for the group and hopefully we have the technological um, foundation to be able to have this discussion meaningfully. Um, but so thinking about your experiences from the task group so far or even in the committee so far, um, what are some of the potential outcomes of hitting our goals? And what are some of those outcomes that we want to ensure? Just gonna throw that out there for folks to think about. And I'm prepped with examples, but I don't wanna prime you guys too much until you've had a chance to think about it. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm using my phone. So if I lose my Wi-Fi, I'll still be able to hear, but I might go back to being an attendee. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so um, some of the, uh, an outcome that I um, hope we'll accomplish is um, to really build trust with um, town staff and with um, the um, <clears throat> businesses, you know, that, that, that we will have worked together and everyone will feel like this was a real um, team effort and, and, you know, appreciate the leadership that the ECAC provided. Um, to get there, but, but feel ownership over it. Um, and, and, you know, and, and same, same thing with, with community members, of, of course, you know, that, that this is a really um, something that everybody takes pride in. Nice, Sandra. thanks. Does anyone else wanna build on that or speak to their own experience in the task group so far? I can go. I think our building's task group has reinforced kind of why I'm involved in climate action or <laughs> the, the, the group at all, um, this committee at all, and that is um, kind of one of the cross-cutting priorities, I think we've called it, right, to make sure that equity is involved in, in every decision that we make, lifting up um, populations that are the most um, most harmfully impacted by the effects of climate change. And I think that that's come up a lot in our group, um, not just the result being equitable, but the process to get to the result being equitable. Um, and I'm really hopeful that our committee will kind of lay that groundwork, not just for the results, right? But like, how do we engage diverse groups in town governance? And we've talked about that a little bit, um, I think maybe it's something we could be doing more of right now. I think our, I don't know if you read, um, what's our homework ask? It's, I'm gonna forget how much the amount is, but the chunk of money that the town has set aside for yeah, social justice. Thousand. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so the charge to our, or the homework for our group was to, to start creating um, some advocacy around that, whether it's emailing town counselors um, or kind of thinking about ways that maybe we could ask the town if that money could be used to um, make sure that the process we're engaging in now, right, whereby we're paying our community leaders to be involved, can that be used to do that either as an extension of our plan or as we continue on in this work to keep the community involved, right? So we're not just doing it here and now, but to keep it moving forward because that costs money. And um, so yeah, like creative creative ways of like rewiring and reshaping how we think about um, getting to the goal, but then what does it look like beyond the goals? I'm really encouraged by 
the conversations we're having in our group around equity and inclusion. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome, Sarah. I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's a topic that's come up in some of the other task groups as well, sort of around strengthening um, strengthening avenues of communication as well as engaging governance um, with different parts of the town, making sure that the town is hearing from all different constituents. Um, I'm thinking specifically about the, actually in the transportation task group, that the idea of um, communication has been something that's come up a few times. So I'm wondering if Laura or Darcy, um, either of you wanted to speak to that. I don't think it's come up in our conversation <clears throat> yet. It's in the original charge of the task group, but has it come up? At least it's not in the list. It's not in the list that we was generated on the spreadsheet. Yeah. But there were a lot yeah. of suggestions on the, uh, you know, the original outreach that was done. Um, a lot of suggestions in, in that document. Yeah, Darcy, I was actually thinking specifically of the idea of sort of um, community liaisons or um, structures that facilitate communication between neighborhoods and the town. Um, so less about the sort of um, physical infrastructure and more about the sort of governance infrastructure that supports that type of communication. And I do remember that coming up in the task group a little bit, or maybe I'm, maybe I'm confusing task groups um, because it has been a theme in multiple groups. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know what has stood out the most for you in terms of um, priorities or actions that you remember having come up in the outreach. Well, I think, um, I mean, just to step in, I mean, I think the conversation we were just having with Brianna actually feeds into this a bit. Um, you know, and to Sarah's point about rewiring and reshaping, you know, it's clear that the website and communication is always a last thought. <laughs> um, and that doesn't seem like that's the way forward necessarily. Um, and so how does, how does the work of the, of the climate action plan support kind of just re reframing where we're focusing our time and effort and, and the benefits of that, I guess, because I, I think people don't see the benefit of communication, clear communication. And what that ends up doing is alienating a lot of people. Um, so, so I think it's directly, I don't know if it's come up that much in our task group, but I think it's directly connected to the work we wanna do and actually building the vision that Andra had of, you know, everybody feeling ownership and um, taking pride yeah, that's, that's awesome, Laura. Um, I think another way that it's sort of come up tangentially is around sort of the resources that, that folks in the community want and need or even information. Like, um, for instance, in our conversation about composting, um, folks were talking about how great it would be to have information on the, the town's website about how to do composting um, and, and maybe that's something that um, translates into a, a bigger picture thing around sort of resources for climate action and making sure that they're accessible to everyone. So I'm going to jump in with that comment, Lauren, because some of the information is on the town's website. Um, mm -hmm. It's buried. And I think that's part of the problem too, is that to find mm -hmm. anything, and even for me, who's someone who works for the town, I, sometimes if I'm looking for something, I can't find it. Um, so it's also a matter of just making it accessible. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, cause there is information there. It's just, you have to go dig to find it. Yeah. Um, and Stephanie, I, I wanna elevate what you, uh, the word that you use there, which is accessibility, I feel like that's another um, big theme that's come up in a few of the task groups. And 
um, I'm sort of going back to our original question around what are the potential outcomes of, of this work in the long term? When we think about we've achieved our 2030 goal or our 2050 goal, what does that mean for things like accessibility? We were talking a little bit about what that means for governance and engagement. Um, but yeah, just throwing that out there. Dwayne? Yeah, I guess I'll, I um, am aligned with everything that was just said uh, by everybody before, and actually it relates quite a bit to um, my take on the question, <clears throat> uh, which is, um, or my response to the question, which is um, that I think um, we're amongst many towns that are looking at this um, and trying to um, crack the same nut, if you will. Um, and I remain convinced that the technology is not the problem. Um, it's the way we deliver the technologies and way we um, uh, um, organize business, business and business plans of how to deliver that so that people are um, incentivized to, to go down this path. Um, and I think that's the real um, tougher nut to crack than we use heat pumps or solar or, or whatever. Um, and that's where um, I, I would, it would be great if part of our outcome can be some in the CCA, CCA 3.0 is a part of this and an important part of this, um, but it also has to really dig into delivery of, of um, vast amount of energy efficiency and um, in existing buildings in Amherst and every other home in, in Massachusetts um, in ways that are just um, mass save is just not even coming close to the the, the pickup of um, what needs to happen between in the next, you know, 10, 10, 30 years. And so um, um, part of an outcome that I would like to see is some innovation um, of, of some of these, at least in thinking through some of these ideas in terms of how this um, uh, economy can be shifted around on a local level uh, to really um, take this on, uh, pilot some ideas, um, uh, to demonstrate this. And this, this is where I think it relates very much to communication, buy-in, support for equ equity. Uh, because I, I think if, if we're asking um, a community to um, do a lot of, of, of um, local economic development, um, uh, work for the community as a whole, as opposed to in, indivi individuals individually, um, and work as a as a community, that's going to take um, not only leadership from from the um, town officials, but throughout all the constituents that we've been speaking with, um, and 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 I think that's where the groundwork is really has been really important, as well as a bent towards equity um, throughout this. So um, I'm still struggling exactly what those um, uh, delivery mechanisms are and those business plans are. Um, but um, I think that's to some extent um, would be something that we could offer um, that maybe other towns aren't looking at as much uh, more so than just, um, you know, let's, let's do energy efficiency and heat pumps. That's awesome, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. I, what I'm hearing from that um, very eloquent sort of in-depth discussion of, of what that means is sort of two things. One is, is sort of a vision of a, a really thriving local clean energy economy. And the other is, is around something around like engaging the entire community. And maybe that has something to do with workforce development, with, with, with working with local businesses as Andre was speaking to earlier as well. Um, but those are sort of the, the two things that stood out to me in that, um, in that statement. Would you add anything to that or modify what I took away from that? Nope, I think that's great additions. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Darcy, yeah, Darcy. Sorry. Yeah, I, I guess I'm. I am um, really struggling with trying to think about where we're headed here and what kind of a framework we're setting up of a plan. And I, I feel like um, 
we're going to come up with these actions and they're, they're going to have co-benefits. And I think that's kind of what you're asking. What are, what are the goals in addition to greenhouse gas reduction um, and some degree of climate resilience? What else are we getting out of this? Well, we're getting you know, climate justice benefits out of some, but not every single thing will we get a climate justice benefit, but we'll get it out of a lot. Um, and we'll also get a thriving economy, jobs, et cetera, hope, that we're hoping to get from local development of, of our own energy. Um, so I guess I'm just, <laughs> I'm really um, wanting us to come up with this framework that kind of shows what are the actions in each of the areas? What are the subcategories? What are the co-benefits of each thing? Um, and I uh, don't, you know, I think that I want us to have a timeline. You know, we said we're going to get priorities done by the time the town manager gets his budget done. That doesn't give us very long. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I may be jumping ahead here, but, um, you know, I, I want to sense what, where we're going immediately after this last meeting with the community is done and how, how we can help get there, or how this group can help us get there. Yeah, absolutely, Darcy. I, I really appreciate that comment, and especially what you were saying there around um, co-benefits, because I know you weren't with us last time, but that was part of the discussion, and really one thing that we've heard consistently from the committee is that all of the actions that end up in the plan are going to be evaluated of course, in terms of emissions reduction potential, but also in terms of their co-benefits and in terms of their potential for enhancing equity. Um, and that's definitely the framework that we're working within in terms of how actions show up in the plan and how they get prioritized. Um, but I do really wanna encourage you to think on the big picture level just for today, because we are gonna have another um, meeting once the task groups wrap up specifically focused on the actions. Um, but because we're not done with that process yet, I don't want to um, go there yet because there's still there's still a lot that I'm sure is going to be coming out of those third meetings. Um, so, so thinking about some of those co-benefits, I like your framing there. If you were to think about it in terms of, okay, by 2050, we've achieved our, our carbon neutrality goal. What are some of the co-benefits of having achieved that goal? And what are some of the co-benefits that we really want to see? Um, thinking back specifically to the transportation task group, for instance, one of those big aspirational things that came up was uh, transportation as a fundamental human right and, and what that could look like. Um, expanded public transportation, fare free public transportation. Um, that was just one vision presented by one individual in the group, but sort of an example of the kind of thinking that I want to encourage um, through this conversation. So Darcy, how, how are you thinking about co-benefits when you picture those, um, picture Amherst in, in 2050 having achieved carbon neutrality? What are some of the other benefits that we're seeing? And you can focus on transportation or waste or any of the other, <laughs> sorry? I said, I want, I want socialism. Um, <laughs> uh, that is, you know, yeah. That, that so, I mean, that's a whole damn thing, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> definitely a resonant theme here is sort of economic transformation. I'm definitely hearing that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, fundamental transformation um, and a buy in from the community of. Um, you know, a fundamental transition in the way we do things, the way we consume things, the way we take public transportation, the whole nine yards. Um, but that would require, I mean, that requires massive public education and mm -hmm. massive communication um, with, you know, buy-in, neighborhood captains, everything, um, like Gazi Kaya was suggesting. I am all for that. Um, and uh, to the extent, 
I mean, but that's not necessarily something we want to say in our initial plan because everybody will run away from us if we say yes. <laughs> um, that's a valuable perspective. You know, I, I, I think it's important to, to think about how things will be received as well. Um, but nonetheless, to, to hold that part of, part of the ECA's job here is to set that vision, is to, to, to be aspirational and to, to give people big ideas and big goals to work towards, as you have with the carbon goals. And so I don't want you to shy away from it in the moment, even though we, we have to acknowledge that there are perceptions that will be involved in the plan, of course. And I wouldn't... Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, I at the end of the day, it may not be in our best interest to use the S word, if you will. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, to talk about co-ops, um, you know, energy co-ops, which are you know, meant much of the country served by energy co-ops, at least on the electric side. Um, buying co-ops for heat pumps and and so forth. The CCA has a little socialist <laughs> uh, aspect to it as well. We don't use that necessarily, or, or uh, but um, um, so I think there's, and you know, talking about new dip business models, I mean, that's that's getting there as well. So I think there's ways to, um, uh, you know, bring these ideas forward without scaring people off, if you will. Jesse's been trying to get, yeah, Jesse's thanks, Sandra. Jesse, please jump in. I, I think one of the we saw in our group or that was brought up was the, the sort of the difference between bold action and incrementalism. Uh, and, and I think that's, and I think we can do both. You know, I, I, I my mind leads towards bold action and, and, and I'd like, you know, in the future, in the 2050, if we're here, you know, <clears throat> to go back and, and, and I think if the look back says that, you know, that not just this town, but many people made courageous choices and took risks, that were bold. Uh, I'm not sure that incrementalism is going to get us there on the timeline that we have, but we may need to do that. So I think acknowledging that tension, I think is important. It was brought up in our group for sure. Um, in many different, in many ways, not making false promises um, was an important piece of that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think to speak to the this co-benefit and what Dwayne was saying, it, I feel like it to me, it's not it, it would do this action and it'll also help this group or this other thing. I, I think it might be the other way around that unless there is cultural shift and unless all you know all the demographics are part of this it won't succeed so i think it's 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 not that you can help others by being green it's we cannot solve the climate problem without solving a social problem at the same time and maybe even first and that that i don't know if that's what duane was saying necessarily but it co-benefit feels like the wrong word. I don't think it captures that concept um, in the same way. I uh, thanks, Jesse. I did have the same thought about um, terminating it, ter using the terminology co-benefits because I think it's as you mm -hmm. said, some, somewhat of a necessary condition to get there, as opposed to a a, um, a, 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 a peripheral outcome. I love yeah, and thinking. I would say it's a. Oh. A subtle reframe. Sorry, go ahead, Laura. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing this <clears throat> really pulling together as like, this is our opening statement of the, of the plan. You know, we need transform, we need bold action, we need transformational change. We know we need that for climate, we need that for racial equity, we need that for public health, I mean, education. I think everything in our society right now is at this point of, recognize, of recognize, recognizing or, you know, reproaching it, and, and we're the same way, but we can't, but to back to the increment, 
fractal pieces, we've got to also take small actions. But I think our whole plan, sort of recognizing that at the beginning, identifying the actions we're taking now, not just in ter- by ourselves, but collectively with our neighboring communities and, you know, sort of larger, you know, we need the state and the national government to be pushing. We can't do it all ourselves either. So kind of wrapping that all together into the plan, I think will be really powerful. Yeah. I just want to jump in real quick to add that um, I, I feel like I'm hearing conversations at the state level that are moving in this direction as well, that I'm feeling more encouraged by. I mean, even with the um, MVP funding and program, they're starting to bring in more elements of equity in what they're funding. So, you know, I just, I think it's a, you know, it's just moving in a direction and it feels like it's bigger than even what we're doing. It's happening. It's just, there seems to be more of a swell of awareness, um, especially lately, that seems to be fueling a lot of what we're saying. And I do think, you know, it's maybe not happening as quickly as we want, but I think, you know, it's encouraging to me that it's happening, that we can just push it even farther. Yeah, Stephanie, it sounds like well, what I've heard from the group so far is that it's it's not only that we want to be part of this wave, but that we want to be on the leading edge of it. Um, and I also want to pull out one thing from what Laura said there, which was this idea of it's not just what we're doing as a town, but also how we're collaborating with our neighbors and our region. And that's also been a, a theme that's come up in several of the task groups is sort of the need for regional collaboration because so many of these issues cross town borders and can't be solved on our own. Um, so I think holding that framework as well um, as part of the plan will be an important one. I wanna give the folks who haven't had a chance to say much um, a chance to chime in. Steve, I'm looking at you. Oh. And you're muted there. So I don't know yeah. if you wanted to. I'm impressed with everybody's um, optimism. I got stuck a little bit when you said that, what will we do when we've reached all of our goals by 2050? And I thought, I hadn't thought of that because I don't <laughs> think we're going to. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to imagine how, you know, what, what I think we're gonna continue having to work on those in many ways. I like what you had said much earlier about having some goals that are fairly immediate and having bigger goals that perhaps will have be broken out into smaller goals that can be chipped away at sort of year by year. Um, mm-hmm. I think that'll be important if, if, if we develop, say, a transportation plan in Amherst, it might be one area of Amherst in some early years and then expand as it gets worked out. So having a plan mm-hmm. gets us towards our goals in an incremental way, I guess, connects the dots between the... Um, highly aspirational and optimistic endpoint and what are we going to do today tonight tomorrow in order to make progress towards it awesome yeah i love what you said there about the transportation plan too because one thing that has come up in the transportation task group is specifically um, around this idea of piloting some shuttles in areas of low car ownership or potentially also areas of high car ownership, but low transit availability to get more people out of their cars. Um, And so it also sort of connects back to what Duane was saying around piloting new ways of doing things. It gets at this idea of regional collaboration because the PBTA is very much a regional entity um, and those types of programs can have regional implications. Um, And it connects to exactly what you're saying around sort of the the incremental uh, or sort of larger goals, like maybe transportation as a fundamental human right, being chipped away at in these shorter term chunks that lead us to that ultimate goal. So (laughs) um, this has been a really rich conversation already, but I definitely don't wanna end it now if folks have more um, thoughts or things that they wanted to add or build off of. Um, especially because, you know, we don't, we haven't had many opportunities yet for the co-chairs to sort of share across the groups. 
And um, I'm hoping that it's interesting for everyone to hear a little bit about what's been going on in the different groups and how they've been overlapping. Um, so just sort of on that note, does anyone have any um, thoughts about how, how these things connect or um, things that they wanna hear more about from other task groups? I know we don't have all of the co-chairs here today, but yeah, Sandra. Um, so um, in looking at the um, spreadsheets with the principles that you all have, have pulled out, um, I think there's some, you know, commonalities that we really shouldn't leave in the task groups. They're, they're just very, very general. There's probably, you know, 10 of the principles don't belong in the task group itself. It, they're, and they're repetitive across. That we should have, you know, principles that are, <clears throat> that apply to all our work. Um, we also need to um, include principles that aren't there. Right now they, um, the, the the environmental justice principles and you know co-benefits you know as long as we use that word um, are predominant and that's not the only thing we're doing um, right. and I think it's really important for us to fill in the gaps so that when we start writing plan we are clear on um, you know, the, the <clears throat> various things that we want to do. Um, and, and also some of the strategies are actually principles. And so I started moving things around in the document to make it make more sense for me. Um, and and I, I, I think, you know, sorting them out, I just, I feel like we've got so much work to do, I you know. You know, I want to dive in. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that, Andra. I think it's true. Some of the, the strategies do are actually probably stronger as principles. And, and sort of the reason that they're included in there now is so that you can see the evolution and, and hopefully pull some, some actions that capture those ideas into the plan. Um, and I love this thought of sort of principles for the work overall and how the process of the task groups has really brought some of those to the surface in that there are commonalities across the groups as you pointed out. Um, so I'm kind of thinking it might be um, a useful piece of ECAC homework for everyone to think about, to look through those principles and think about what are some additional principles that we might need to bring to our process? Um, uh, just an offering, not a requirement, but if folks do want to think about that and, and think about um, what, how they would build off of the principles that have come out of the task group so far. And now you all have all of the principles. Uh, you've, have, you've had them in the notes so far, but they're all in the, the spreadsheet there. Um, I think it would be great to hear from the group about how you would build off of those principles? Well, I think that before we have our last meeting, we need to, to have the expanded principle so that our community members aren't surprised by what actually ends up being in the plan. Um, I, I think we owe them that. So I think um, it's probably not going to be possible to have them ready before all of the task group meetings because we do have our first one starting tomorrow. Um, however, um, we are fully intending to circle back with the community leaders and with the task group participants with a draft of a plan. So I think um, it will be critical to have that in there um, and make sure that community members get to see it and digest it um, and respond to it before the plan is finalized or um, taken any further. So I would say that's a, an important priority for the ECAC to be thinking about um, and something that we should discuss again at the, the meeting that follows the last uh, round of task groups. So, well, if, if we want to have input into 
um, for those that aren't tomorrow, um, into what our um, meetings will look like. Um, how, how do we do that? I, you know, looking at the agenda, there, there's some things I would like to spend more time on and some I'd like to spend less time on. Yep, so you can just send feedback um, directly to myself and Jim and same as usual, um, feel free to make comments in the documents and send them back. Yeah, and if you, if you wanna do oh. a, a uh, you know, if you wanna have a call or something, we we'll do all the things, we can do that. Definitely. Yeah, Darcy. Um, I have a couple of comments. One is about the discussion about resilience. Um, and it strikes me that that needs to be um, defined better because resi resilience as a general concept mm -hmm. is not the same as climate resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we need to focus on that as the concept, the, the resilience to climate impacts. Um, and so if we could, to the extent, I saw that that's in every one of the agendas, mm -hmm. a discussion about bouncing back. Well, it's <laughs> climate resilience, not just generally resilience in life. Um, so um, if we could make sure that we change that, that would be good. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think one important note is that the the agenda doesn't contain all the sort of facilitators notes and, and part of the part of that piece um, would be to provide a more um, in depth definition of what what bouncing back actually means in the context of climate change. Um, so specifically talking about climate shocks and stressors, um, things like intense storms. Um, Giving, giving more concrete examples and how they relate to climate. But I really do appreciate that comment and I can clarify that in the agendas as well. That would be great. And um, uh, as far as the transportation group, um, I, do, I, I did go over the page that um, was provided in the spreadsheet. And um, I had some of the same um, reaction as Andra in that I felt like a lot of the, the, the strategies were actually principles. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that for the, the transportation group is a little different because we have the different, different um, Many topics. different topics. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we didn't, we didn't really cover communication and public health. So I don't know what we're going to do about that exactly. Uh, other than maybe go back to the original suggestions that we had in our original outreach or our original sector analyses. Um, but I did go through the transportation and waste and, um, and try to organize it according to transportation and waste. <laughs> and the Great. Thank you. categories. And I did add some stuff in that we hadn't talked about uh, that may or may not have um, well, it's arguable that it does have EJ um, benefits to, for example, um, accelerate uh, electric vehicle development or adoption in town. Because yeah. that's pollution. That's an right. EJ. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so um, anyway, I put some of those in that were in the um, the other um, uh, our initial outreach and in the the plans that you had suggested that we look at from other communities. Um, so I will share that with you. I could share that with everybody now, but um, I could just share that with you also. Yeah, I think use that because it's it's. Uh, Hard to hard to sift through it since we have so many different topics there. Yeah, I hear that. I think um, I do want to stress that the the actions in the spreadsheet that were sent out um, for this meeting are only things that have come out of the task groups 
so far. And at the end of this process, we will be putting those together with the previous strategies, as well as strategies that come from other towns and precedents and best practices, as well as strategies that come from conversations with you all, with um, town staff and with other stakeholders. So that's by no means a comprehensive list. And absolutely, if you are looking at those lists and things come to mind that strike you as very important, please do feel free to add them. Please do send them our way. We wanna be keeping track of those things as they come up so that they don't get lost in the shuffle. Um, so thank you for doing that, Darcy. Really appreciate it and absolutely do send those our way. Um, I think just in the interest of time and the weather, um, we probably will skip the looking at spreadsheets today, um, but that will definitely be part of a, a future conversation where we talk about the actions more holistically as well. So thank you. Um, I think I'll wrap it up there unless other folks wanted to add a final word. I'd just like to note that the storm has finally hit me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, not to cut short, but I actually do have to go. Apparently we are trapped in our neighborhood. Um, there's multiple trees down Pine Street taking out all of the electrical wires. Oh my gosh. So um, I don't want to waste my battery anymore because I don't know when we will have power back. Um, so I don't, and I just saw my internet's unstable. Can you hear me still? Yeah, a little. Yes. Probably. <laughs> yeah, you're in and out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave and let Andra and Stephanie close out the meeting. Good idea. Thank you, Laura. Okay. okay, be safe. Hi, Laura. Yeah. Okay. So, I, um, Andra, I don't know if you have anything else, but I'm, I'm thinking it's probably just a good time to wrap up. I still don't have power yet either. And I hear, I've heard sirens, so I don't know what's going on around here either yet. <laughs> Jesse, you're bravely outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing out there, Jesse? <laughs> getting me? It's beautiful out. Yeah, actually, it's pretty calm now <laughs> in Amherst, at least uh, on the. I don't yeah. have the reception to be inside. My, I don't get a good reception inside. No, we're. Oh. So, what I miss? Is anyone left on the call? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. People are here, but I think we're wrapping up. So, unless oh, anyone has oh. anything else to add, we should probably just wrap up. Okay. So I, I have to apologize. I got really wrapped up in the discussion and wasn't taking <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll have to recreate them collectively. I, that's okay, Andre. Doris, I also was um, taking Andrew. notes that whole time, so I can send them to Stephanie too. <laughs> yeah. I and I have my own notes as well. So I think we're we'll be good. <laughs> so no worries. Okay, everyone. So Andra, do you want to wrap up or Jesse, did you have one last thing you were saying? I was, no, I, 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 I'm I, just saying. Oh. I'll say notes. I don't know if anyone talked about flexibility to changing times and bell reception. That should go. <laughs> Important note. Yeah. I think this is a, an unusual meeting we're having. Mm -hmm. um, Typically, it's not quite like this. So, uh, this is this is a classic. Uh, um, what is what what is referred to as a metalogue, where the thing we're talking about is the form of the conversation we're having, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, here we're talking about a resilience and bouncing forward, and like the power is going off and trees are falling, and <laughs> you know, people are dropping in and out, and uh, yeah. That's kind of what um, we're talking about. Yep. So I, I just want to invite um, public comment if um, Sarah Ross in the attendee list wanted to say something at this point. I, Sarah told me, um, oh, she is raising her hand. So Sarah, I think you need to um, star six to speak. 
or star, it's either star six or star nine on your phone. And then you should be able to speak. Let's see. Um, uh, probably none of us have the ability to. Yeah, Sarah, I apologize. I, um, because I got knocked out, I'm on my phone. And I think I, I was hosting, but I'm not sure I have the ability to, um, to move you. Yeah. So, hold on. Sorry, so please email yeah. Stephanie any comments and we can put them into the notes. Um, so, all right. Yeah, I do apologize. We to, do we have to vote to adjourn? Oh, wait, you know what? Oh, hold oh on. there. Oh, Got her. Okay, Sarah, you're on. Oh, Sarah, if you all that trouble. I just wanted yeah. to say thank you so much for all the work you guys are doing. It was great to listen in. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> even through the storms, you guys braved ahead. So, so thanks so much for letting me listen in. That's it. And thanks for all your great work. It was a pleasure hearing you. Thanks, Sarah. And we hope you join us again. Um, and, and also that you'll have an opportunity to really contribute to the conversation because I'm sure you have some thoughts and perspective that we'd love to hear. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Thanks so much for having me. Sure. Yes. Thank you. thank you very much. We've got thumbs up around the table here. So um, I think that is it. Um, we we should technically have the next meeting agenda conversation, but I think it will be obvious after our. Um, we'll, actually, there's going to be one meeting that will not have finished before by the next meeting, I believe. Um, so, well, then, then we ought, ought to um, talk. If people have things that they want to put on the agenda, so let's just send them to you and Laura, Stephanie. Yep, send, yeah. yep. send them to me and or, or actually both Laura and myself. Okay, does anybody want to throw something out right now that they definitely want on the agenda? Of the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess we talked about having a framework, right? Of is that going to be done by the next meeting? Like an outline. All the, the, all the meetings won't be, all the task group meetings won't be done yet because the next meeting is on the 14th. And but I, I think we're talking about format, not content. Right, that's what you were asking for last time, Jesse. Right? I think it would be helpful. I I don't want to. I don't want to step on toes of the process. And if and if and I do, I really do trust the process. But if there, that's if, all good, if, Jesse. Yeah, we can definitely send out a, a an outline of the format. I think understanding the sort of the 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 structure of the plan, so we can start taking all these ideas and thinking about where it goes right or wrong just something if that if again if there's a reason not to don't do it no that sounds great no problem great okay okay so any other ideas send them laura and stephanie's way and i call this meeting adjourned you're here. Thank you all for braving it. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Be safe. Bye. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Seriously, stay safe. Okay. <laughs>